Hello everyone. Today our topic on computer system architecture course is hardware description languages, HDLs. This is the last section on chapter four. I published four videos. One video on register transfer language, register transfer, bus and memory transfers, arithmetic micro operations, one video on logic micro operations, one on shift micro operations, and the last one was on arithmetic logic shift unit. A hardware description language, HDL, is a programming language used to describe the behavior or structure of digital circuits. HDLs can describe the digital circuit system's operation, its design, and tests to verify its operation using simulation. A hardware description language enables a precise formal description of a digital circuit that allows for the automated analysis and simulation of the circuit. It also allows for the synthesis of a HDL description into a net list, which can then be placed and routed to produce the set of masks used to create an integrated circuit. A hardware description language looks much like a programming language such as C. They consist of expressions, statements, and control structures. The main difference between HDLs and the programming languages is that HDLs explicitly include the notion of time. Many HDLs are available, but VHDL and Verilog are by far the most popular. Most CAD tools available in the market support these languages. VHDL stands for very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language and Verilog for verify logic. I published a video on HDLs on the digital design course with Verilog examples. And today we'll have an introduction to VHDL. VHDL is an industry standard for the description, modeling, and synthesis of digital circuits and systems. Logic synthesis is a process by which an abstract form of a desired circuit behavior or model is turned into a design implementation in terms of logic gates. There are two nice features for HDL. The first, it does not depend on a specific programmable logic devices, PLAs, or field programmable gate arrays for its development. And the second is that it's similar in syntax to object-oriented languages such as C. The description of a logical block is split into two parts, the entity and the architecture. The entity declaration is much like a declaration of a function in C. Suppose, for example, that we have an 8-bit combinational compare circuit, 8-bit compare circuit with 16 inputs and one output. Eight inputs for the first number, A, and eight bits for the second number, B. The output produces one if they are equal, one and zero if they are not equal. In this case, the entity declaration tells us that we have a device called compare eight. It does not tell us how compare actually functions. This is left to the architecture section. This is the entity section for declaring the circuit. The first line tells us what we are describing. In this case, the name of the entity is compare eight. The word port followed by parentheses tell us that the following information 
describes the I.O., the input-output behavior of the entity. Line two begins with the actual description of the inputs. In our example, we are using X and Y as inputs and declaring them to be vectors of eight bits each with bit seven being the most significant bit and bit zero the least significant bit. Line three describes the output for the circuit. Here we have only one output result since we need to know if the values are equal or not equal. For example, if they are equal, the output is one and if they are not equal, the output or not equal, zero. The final line of the entity section tells us that we are at the end of the description of the entity called compare eight. And this is important since we may have several entities in the program. The second entity is the architecture entity. The architecture statement is like the actual function in C. It describes the logic behind the entity. For our example, the output is one if the two numbers X and Y are equal and zero if they are not equal. The begin statement on line two tells us that you are beginning your description of the logic. Statement three, and this is the main statement of this section, the value one will be placed in the result when the numbers X and Y are equal. Else, it will retain zero. The final line four tells us that we have completed our description of the architecture struct. In addition to these two parts, we have to include these two statements at the beginning of the program. This must be the first two lines of every entity because it tells the compiler that you are using the standard IEEE library and that the signal type that you are declaring in the entity can be found in the IEEE ST logic 1164. This is where it recognizes what STD logic vector and STD logic mean. Now we can combine all these three parts to get the complete description of an 8-bit compare circuit. This as the library lines, this is the entity section, and this is the architecture section. Again, here is the main statement of this section. Result retains one if X and Y are equal and zero otherwise. This was a quick introduction to BHDL language. This introduction may be enough for computer science students, but computer engineering students are required to learn more and use the language to simulate their circuits. This was the last topic in chapter four, and on the next video, we are going to start chapter five. For today, that's all. Thank you.